What's up, everybody? We are kicking off the Equip Expo in style at the John Deere booth with Eric Halfman. He is the go-to market manager here at John Deere, and we have a John Deere user. Yeah, yeah. Straight uh, John, out Jeremiah of Alabama. Jennings. Yep, growing green landscapes right out of Alabama. Used Deere from the beginning. Looking forward to what we get into today. Yeah, you're a big John Deere guy, so I figure I, I got to get you on this podcast. Yeah, here, so. yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, Jeremiah. Absolutely. It's you're been a man. pleasure. Cool. Well, we have some electrifying action here. Absolutely. So uh, tell us about it, Eric. So we're here to give you a glimpse at Equip Expo at the electrification journey that John Deere is going to be under for the next several years to come. And what you see at Expo, what visitors will see at Expo, is several machines that are in the turf and utility product platform that we're going to introduce between now and 2026. Wow. Now, 2026, we're recording this in 2022. You were telling me a little bit off there of how timelines Yeah, working. so it might seem like, wow, you're going to make us, you're showing it now. And so these are concept machines behind us. We've got to validate them with our customers, right? We've got to make sure that customers get what they want. That's kind of a big deal to us, John Deere. Mm -hmm. But surely we'll, we'll introduce and sprinkle some of these products in before 2026. So... We're not, we're not going to make everybody wait till 2026 20, for all these products. It's interesting to look at a mower and it's like, where's the pulley? Where, where's all the stuff? Yeah, <laughs> so, right, right. So, it's so like, walk us through, how does this whole thing work? Yeah, I mean, so it, maintenance maintenance for, for folks, you know, working every day is a, is a big deal. So, we were put, you know, we're going to simplify this thing by replacing a, an engine, diesel or gas, with an a, electric battery, right? That immediately simplifies the maintenance game and... On a mower like the one we're looking at today, your pulley systems, things like that, belts are removed from these mowers. So it really gets simple and really saves cost of ownership for our for our customers. Yeah, totally. Now we have uh, three other machines here. Do you want to mention what else you guys? Yeah, so have? we've got a, we've got four concept machines here, and one is a residential uh, a residential zero turn, one is a, a stand on like a quick track machine yep. for our commercial uh, mowers. A compact utility tractor, 1,000 series compact utility tractor, and a heavy-duty Gator utility vehicle. So all electric offerings, as I mentioned, by 2026. What are you ro rolling with, Jeremiah? We run the Z930Ms. That's something we've ran from the beginning, and it's it's been an awesome machine. I mean, there's I've seen other guys run other things out there, and it's just it's hard to beat what I've ran. I mean, because durability at the end of the day, which is what you're saying, maintenance. Maintenance is a big thing, but when you don't have to do a ton of maintenance, it makes it a lot better. Yeah. Uh, when stuff's not breaking, mm -hmm. and my stuff doesn't break. So, so that's that's been a huge thing for me. But, yeah, we run Z930Ms. We have ran quick tracks before, so that's an interesting, that's an interesting concept right there yeah. to see moving forward. So how, how far out? You said 2026 is what you said almost. Are we going to get into the Z machines too? So the uh, th these are the four we're starting with, okay. but absolutely, if, if uh, the customer, customer demand is yeah. there, we're certainly going to uh, investigate that. And it comes down to coming up with a product that yeah. is as good as its gas or diesel equivalent. Yep. Yep. So for you in this business, yep. for you even to think about going electric, yep. it's got to run just as good, right? If not That's better. That's right. Yeah, and we had right. that conversation before we were on air. We were having that, saying that exact thing is if I'm going to switch, if you're going to make me pay almost twice as much for an electrified mower, then it better be a good mower. Right. And right. so I'm a big fan of working out the kinks in the beginning and don't just throw a product out there on the market to say, hey, go figure it out. Like, right. let's really test it. Let's do all the stuff behind the scenes and get it a really good product. So when I when I switch, I'm not having to do a ton of right. trips to the shop. Right. So. A yeah. little history lesson with John Deere. Not sure if you know this, but most people think John Deere introduced the plow, right? Yeah. But the plow was introduced long before John Deere introduced really? it. John Deere introduced a plow that worked. See, exactly. So this is this is the exact the exact same timeline yeah. that we're looking at with these machines. We we want to bring a product to market that's that's going to work. And it's got to last audience. all day long. Yes. Because if, if it's only six or yeah. seven hours and you're working an eight hour day, I, I'm from it. You know, we're, it's hot yeah. down there. You can't yeah. you can't be getting to that second and last yard of the day and then it's like <laughs> oh I got like my cell phone is always like the charger. Like ah oh, I need to charge it. You right. know, you right. can't be having that when you're running a route with a lawnmower. You yeah. know. Yeah, I was just going to say about about charging systems, things like that. So we're looking at charging systems as you look at throughout the industry, very dynamic, a lot of different offerings out there. We're testing a lot of different things, trying to make sure that, hey, we know uptime is is crucial for this audience. And it's going to be interesting to see what, what ends up yeah. in the industry as a standard, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now yeah. to keep guys going. But we get that. We know that we got to keep you going. Yeah. That's the only way. And we got to make it simple too. We want we want to make it simple for you. Yeah. Simple charging, simple simple to, to maintain and, and run. Yeah. yeah. Downtime is bad time. Yeah, I'm sure you guys had way high-level conversations about all this for years. A lot of the folks listening to this show like gas. 
like Diesel, the trend that this year's trade show for your booth, obviously, and many others is going electric. So why are these major respected humongous companies going this route? And what would you say to the guy that's stubbornly, I like my gas and diesel engine. You yeah. leave me alone. So, yeah. So we're, we're not announcing exit of gas and diesel in okay. this podcast. There you John go. Deere, right? <laughs> so we, we love our, our gas and diesel customers. I mean, and we are going to work till the day is done to, uh, to keep, keep giving them product that, that they want. But industry trends, so our customers, right, we're starting to get a lot of customer interest in electric. So we, we, we either ignore those trends or we, we jump on it. And we're jumping on it. We want to make sure that we're there to help our, our customers. So no problem with uh, keeping gas diesel. We'll, we're going to have it, you know, for a long time in our lineup. But as we introduce some products, help maybe help yourselves, the customers out there, mm -hmm. take a chance and, and see and talk to other uh, customers that are using this product to see it's going to get validated pretty quick in the market. Professional landscape contractors have a loud voice in the industry, right? They're yeah. going to say it's going to work or it's not. So when we come out, we want to make sure it's going to work and, and trust in the fact that John Deere is going to come with a product. If somebody's gonna... considering getting a new mower and they're on the fence, why would they go with the electric? What's the case? So zero emissions at the tailpipe mm -hmm. is kind of a big deal for, for a lot of our customers. Mm -hmm. Quiet operation. So if you look at any equipment that landscape contractors are using out in the field right now, they're making noise, right? They're making yeah. a lot of noise. Yeah. And a lot of times there's complaints that come with that. So quieter and quieter might get a longer daytime or a longer day for, your, for uh, a yeah. contractor. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to start earlier and you yeah. might be able to end the day later. Yeah, that's a big point that I think. And so obviously not in your rural areas, but when you get into densely populated areas, you have time restrictions on when you can start. And so like if you get down into really tight neighborhoods, I know that's, that's a, in lawn and landscape, that's a big thing is like you want tight routes. You want to be as efficient as you can be. And if, you, if you're doing that, but you can't start until 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock because of city sound ordinances, then that's a big thing. So yep. that's a huge value that I think you're adding with an electric mower is you can start at 7 o'clock because nobody can hear you. Yep. I mean, you can be on their yard now and nobody would ever know what the what was up. So, sure. Yeah, I think that was good. I think you said something earlier that doesn't need to be glossed over, though, is I think something that takes a good company from a good company to a great company is helping their end user and helping their customer. And I think what you're doing in – and really vetting the product and, and putting putting it to the test before it comes to market is something I think is, is really going to resonate with someone like myself who's running products all day long. I, I would say thank you to you for doing yeah, that and then absolutely. all your engineers as well. Yeah. Well, we've been in the business for quite yeah, a bit. And exactly. And you, you hear customers talk and, and it's customer demand. And you're hearing that and you're, you're catching up. I mean, you're, you're keeping up with customer demand. So yeah. from my side, I think that's a really good thing moving forward. So we've been in the uh, riding lawn equi equipment business for 2023. We'll be in the riding lawn equipment business for 60 years. Wow. So we've been making wow. tall grass short for 60 years. <laughs> so we like to think we know a little bit about it, yep, right? Yep. And some exter external uh, sources have told us we're pretty good at it. Yep. Oh, Independent yeah. sources, right? So when we go electric, we got a lot, we got a lot riding on it yep. for everybody out there making tall grass short that's right we want it we want it to look just as good as what our gas and diesel machines do today yeah my grandpa loved his john deere ride and lawnmower when he passed away in the inheritance will it went to my dad yeah so yep. now it's in the garage it's you know it's my dad's the, the car gets parked outside but the john yeah. deere lawnmower yeah. <laughs> and i bet it still <laughs> it gets, runs too yeah they love yeah. it they tune it up every spring and that thing yeah. very very reliable so, so you're but, talking history a little bit let's talk a little history so this is what you see here at, at equip expo is not our first dance in electric so in, in the early 1970s, early 1970s, there was, there was an oil embargo. So a lot of people were scrambling for gas. We actually came out with a rear engine rider in the early 70s that was electric. So long before our time, you know, and everybody's doing the industry trend thing right now, early 1970s, late 1990s, we came out with an electric gator. Again, it's, it's uh, acid battery, but we still sell that Gator today. We have had and continue to have electric offers offerings today. What's the biggest challenge with go-to-market with these new pieces of equipment? What's the biggest challenge that you face in this industry? I guess it's it's probably the barrier of entry of uh, of battery itself. Mm -hmm. Just the fear the fear factor. Mm -hmm. Everyone is used to having a phone. We talked we were talking about it before, and you plug it in and you want to know if it's charging. Yeah. You unplug it, and you want to know how much charge there is. Uh -huh. yes. So the cool thing with some of our electric products we'll come out with is the connectivity, mm -hmm. right? The technology stack. We talk at John Deere about a technology stack with all of our products from, from lawnmowers up to combines. And putting technology into this equipment mm -hmm. so that if you're 
sitting in a shop, you want to know which machines I can run, mm -hmm. are ready to run, mm -hmm. if they need charge or not need charge. The time savings with not having to run to the gas station to fuel up, to be able to make more money on the site yeah. instead of at the yeah. gas station is kind of another offset to this. But mm -hmm. the fear of batteries is really the biggest barrier getting into this business. Yeah. And it is a barrier. It's something that it's new. I mean, it, it, you've been doing it for a long time, but at this level, it's new. And, yeah. But when you get in the beginning like this, it's gonna. I think it's going to do very well for you long term, but mm -hmm. especially when you're doing the, the research that you've done. I think the the uh, usage, the battery usage, the knowing how what you got, I think is huge because, like we said a minute ago, for someone like me, if I have guys out in the field, I don't want them spending time at the gas station. I want them to yep. know, hey, I got 50% of my mower. Let's go get this yard done. Yeah. And one kind of cool thing about a, a concept machine behind us is is the mower on the foot platform. So you'll have readouts on most of these machines that'll tell you where you're at from a charge perspective, what you have left for mm -hmm. for battery power. Yeah. But on your foot platform, you can just simply look forward and see a readout that shows how much charge yeah. you have left. Yeah. So it's kind of a kind of an LED readout, which yeah. would be kind of neat too. So there's some there's some things that you can do with yeah. electric because of that battery mm -hmm. uh, that offer some efficiencies and, and some cool features for customers. When it comes to price, you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, mm, yeah. and you were just throwing out a round number. Oh, it's double the price. Yeah. I don't know that for sure what the price point will be, but that's something that I get a lot. Well, if this machine it costs twelve thousand and this one costs twenty four thousand, those aren't real numbers. Those are just yeah, fictitious right, math. Right, right. How do you justify that big up cost payment when you know on the long run you're going to probably be cheaper without going to the gas station? Yeah, every we other we day? haven't run the numbers yet to see is it a break even after ten years, six mm. years? Is it one way or the other? It's more about price, mm -hmm. I think, with electrification. It's about conscious decision to change, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. To change. We're, we're uh, by 2030, John Deere wants to reduce our fleet emissions for our entire company uh, by 30%. Mm -hmm. So 30 by 30. There's some the, change involved with that. The only way There's we can do that involved. is with some alternative fuel, yep. fuel sources, right? Yeah. And battery's going to play big in that. So I'm not trying to skirt the, the question because it's a, it's a legitimate question. And there's no doubt battery technology initially here is going to cost, it's going to cost more. Mm -hmm. yeah. We go back to the maintenance conversation. And then there's opportunity costs when you're not spending time fueling up machines. You physically have to fuel up machines. Yes. You don't physically have to charge yeah. batteries. You can right? be doing income producing activities right. while it's charging. Yeah. yeah. So there's some opportunity costs. IPAs. That's yeah, right. Have you been listening to my podcast, <laughs> Jeremiah? Know, maybe yeah. a day or Income two. producing activities. Yeah. yeah. I, so. IPAs. More I, money. I, <laughs> we want more money for your, for yeah, your audience. Yeah. So what I hear you saying is is the quiet. Yeah. Instead of waiting until 9 o'clock, you, you can be out there at Sweet Sue's house at 730 without her waking up, getting yeah. all crazy on you. Yeah. And theoretically, I mean, just looking at the machine, it's like, what is there to fix? You know, <laughs> you, you don't have your typical... I mean, it's, it's just looking at it, it's like, that's a mower. That's a benefit. Of course, the time you save not going to the gas station. And in Atlanta, if someone goes to the gas station, then they got to get a hot dog. Then they got to go to the yeah, bathroom. Right. Then they run into the other company. Yep. It's it's clunky. Yep. And you so, spend money. <laughs> you spend unnecessary money in there getting snacks that you don't yeah, need. And yeah. Right. And if you have crews out there, you're, exactly. that's more time lost with those crews. So uh, let me ask you this on the maintenance side of things. This is something that I'm curious about, like I said, as an end user, is there's not a lot of maintenance. That's not something that has to happen all the time. Let's say something does break. I mean, I know we're still in concept mode here. We don't have products out in the field. But if something does break, are we out $5,000 for a motor belt? Or I mean, how does that whole thing work? If something does break, are there going to be warranties involved? Absolutely. That? So, so we're looking at warranties. We've we've got a product that we sell called PowerGuard as well that extends for those folks that put okay. more hours yeah. or or own machines for more years. We're backed again. These these elect electrified products are going to be backed by our John Deere dealer network. Awesome, which yeah, we're very proud of. Yeah. Yes. So in the PLC world, we've got backup programs. Mm. Maybe in the early stages, yeah, yeah, you might yeah. get a gas backup, but eventually but there's going to be a fleet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah, something. That's just something that I get a question about a lot is like, well, hey, my stuff's breaking. What do I do? I'm out for right. a week. Like, yep. Yep. So what is the problem? That's what yeah, I'm Yeah, so up to, Uptime Solutions is a big big part of our B2B audience and the offerings that our dealers offer. Yeah. And really, look at a battery just like an engine. Yep. It's just an engine. It's just a yeah. different kind of engine. Different kind, yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. and engines do have problems occasionally, it right? It will happen, No yeah. matter who builds the engine, there's problems. Yep. So, 
there's going to be support there for you. Yeah, that's awesome. I think yeah. that's going to be huge moving forward. Yeah. Did you want to mention anything on the, the gas side? We've covered. So one offering on the gas. So, yeah, just to, just to reiterate, we're not getting out of the gas business. Uh, that's what Please I want to know. There's, Please don't. There's, there's, I, I still use it every day. So. There's a lot of people asking questions yeah. like, oh, where's John Deere going? They're going to have electric from an electric combine down yeah. to an electric Z-Track. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. hey, we're, we're going to be in this in the gas business, uh, diesel business. We're committed to it. Our customers want it. We're committed to our customers, right? Yeah. One product we introduced that uh, we're introducing here at the show is the Z760R. It's oh, a 20, wow. 27 high horsepower machine, mid-mount zero, tu- yep. zero turn, yep. right? Which is fantastic. Gas machine, gas yep. powered machine. We have a plethora here of machines from, you know, it's fall now. It snowed uh, four inches close to where I, I live already this Keep year. Keep me away from oh, that. So, man. So I don't fall, want any of that. So fall, people are going to be doing fall cleanups yeah. Heck and no. snow removal here at the same time, uh, coming real fast. So. Yep. We've got tons of equipment to, that'll help you, you know, from mowing equipment to snow removal, gator utility vehicle lines, compact utility tractors. Yeah. We'd like to think, and our compact construction equipment as well. So mm. we'd like to think we can, we can, we can be a one-stop shop for your customers. We have a few things to offer to the yeah. to the customer. Yep. Yeah. Just Absolutely. a few. Absolutely. Jeremiah, is there anything you want to add as, as someone who's been authentically day yeah. one new in business? You've been John Deere from the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. John Your John whole business has been John Deere mowers. Yeah. So I mean, what, what, do you what would you of, like to yeah, share? What do you think about all this? Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I, I like the battery. I like to see the new technology coming in. But at the same time, I like to see that you're not just forsaking the gas users because there are going to be people, people that the battery just doesn't work for their business. I mean, there's going to be models where it just doesn't work for them, yep. especially not at this time. Now, maybe in 25 years, we might all be there. Right. But at this right. time, in this yep. early stages, you can't just forsake what's gotten you to the point of where you're at. Right. And, and that's something I think happens a lot is you just can't forget where you came from, that type of thing. And mm-hmm. so sticking to the gas is something that's huge for me because, like I said, I'm, I'm using that every single day. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. I think moving forward, I'm excited to see where we go. I'm excited to see how the gas powered improved, uh, how it improves moving forward as well. Battery is cool, but I, I love the I love the machines every single day. Like I said, I don't go to the shop twice a week to get stuff fixed. And when I do, I have a backup waiting on me in the dealer program that you use. Sure, sure. Um, share about that a little bit. If somebody doesn't use John Deere products, what is the what is that whole program you said earlier? You mentioned that you get a backup or whatever. But for me, I know we get a demo if we go in and. Just share about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So if uh, you do, do business uh, with John Deere dealers, yeah. certainly uh, buying our commercial mowing equipment out there. Uh, we've got an uptime guarantee program that uh, provides loaners or yeah. demo units yep. uh, for our customers if there's a some significant downtime situation that they're mm-hmm. going through. So um, I can attest to it because even through the, I know you've you've had to deal with this with the product shortage over the last yeah, two years. Yeah, it's been a problem. Like we've had our dealers were like, man, we are running low on demos. Like we, it's hard to get machines to even sell, much less demo out. But through the whole process, we've always had something. It might not be the same machine you've had, but it keeps you going. Right. If you can mow 12 out of your 20 yards instead of zero out of your 20 yards, you're doing all right. Absolutely. So I think it comes back to putting your customers first and mm-hmm. what they need. So I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm John Deere from the beginning, and I, I'm excited to see where the future goes. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. And see, we've got a we've got a customer right here yeah. that is a testament that this, these machines get the job done. They work. So. They, they work. Yeah. They get the job done. They're unlike any machine out there. I can firmly say that. And, and not and there's no money involved here. There's nothing. It's just me saying, hey, I'm out here. This is my work. This is what I've used. Let's take and run with yeah. it. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I can tell you as well for those listeners out there that want to kind of follow our journey, on Deer.com we have a sign-up. You can get signed up to follow the electrification journey. Uh, You'll see the video that we're showing here today. You can catch that online. Deer YouTube channel, it's also playing as well. But you can follow the journey, and we'll tease, tease folks along the way when we're ready to launch a product. We'll let everybody know we're launching. Yeah. And when we're thinking about something new down the road even more, we're gonna we're gonna keep people in the know. Cool. Yeah, if you've heard this rumbling in the background, it's because this, this video is running behind us. So if you're not at Equip, you're missing out. But hey, uh, I'm looking forward to what we have moving forward. Yeah, so. yeah you gotta make it to the show next year, guys. Yeah. This this is so cool. And and you get to see this stuff up close and personal and actually talk, you know, to the folks that are behind these products. So I highly recommend coming to this trade show. It's the sixth largest trade show in our industry, or in the U.S., US. largest in our industry by far. So uh, we appreciate John Deere. Literally just got here, walked through the door. You can't miss John Deere. You guys are the first booth that you'll run into. Is there anything we're leaving out here that needs to be addressed? Gas, electric, anything you want to share? It's just an exciting time for John Deere. Mm. You know, we're we're entering, and I'm glad you guys are a part of it. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, Paul and Jeremiah. Yeah. Uh, Paul really making us be a part of this celebration because there's an energy around the folks in John Deere right now mm-hmm. that we're hoping the industry 
captures and, and catches on with. Mm -hmm. It's cheesy to say it's electrifying, but it really is. That's actually it's, very clever. <laughs> yeah. yeah Whoever made up that Giddy's a raise. That, yeah, that was very great marketing. <laughs> I just made it up. So. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> well, there's your next no. pitch. Right. There you go. Right. So your... I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna get every every podcast listener is gonna give me a little bit. That's you know, right. A quarter or nickel or something like no, that. No, that's that's clever marketing. Say, hey, I came up with this. Yeah. Forward, absolutely. So. Absolutely. No. So one of our tags is. Uh, run with us to an electric tomorrow so mm, yeah, we know good. we know not everybody wants to run with us right so you can walk with us you can you can be a, a visitor or a spectator mm -hmm. right but it's common and mm -hmm. we're excited about it and we're, we're ready for the journey yeah my friend has a saying the trend is your friend yeah and he's talking about the google algorithm he's a youtuber the trend is your friend and you guys are jumping right into the hottest trend in this industry so. yeah yeah, yeah, that's crazy. It's good. It's good stuff. Future's bright. Yeah, and we're gonna when we come to market, we're gonna come market right. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Well, let guys know uh, Jeremiah how they can connect with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how they can connect with John Deere, Eric. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremiah Jennings. We have the Growing Green podcast. Kind of the same lines here. We're trying to help people who are young in business getting started. People who are looking for the right equipment to buy moving forward, help their businesses get it up and running. So you can check us out on all major platforms there. Like I said, we run, run and own a lawn and landscape company. So I know all this stuff day in and day out. So if we can ever help anyway, that's where you can find us. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, for John Deere, we've got an awesome dealer network out there across North America to support all the customers out there listening right now. Head out to Deere.com. To the dealer locator. Just, if you don't know who your local John Deere dealer is, I'd encourage you to go visit a John Deere dealer and check out some equipment. And yes, we we do have equipment to sell. We do have equipment to demo. Mm, so huge. let's uh, let's let's give it a try. I encourage you guys to give it a try. And and again, one more shot for the electrification journey. If you go out to Deere.com, you can sign up to follow the journey. Ride with us to electric tomorrow. Cool. Right. Thank you for your time, Eric. Thank you for letting us come to the John Deere booth. If you guys want more content, make sure you smash that follow button. Turn the bell on for notifications. We're going to have a ton more podcasts coming your way from the Equip Expo. So signing off with Jeremiah and Eric from the John Deere booth at the 2022 Equip Exposition.